This is the Wealth Standard Podcast, the gold standard in all things financial. Hi, everyone. This is Patrick Donahoe, and you are listening to episode 195 of the Wealth Standard Podcast. And this is, uh, this is a good one. It's actually a pre recorded one that I did uh, last week. And uh, it's with a really, really good friend of mine. We actually did we actually did a podcast, man, this it was probably last summer. And we were interrupted like every five minutes by a loudspeaker at the airport because we were trying to record it at the airport. Anyway, so Mike Isom is, uh, is my guest. But before we get to Mike, and I'll actually give you a few other details details in just a second. But I wanted to just make sure that all of you are aware of the, of the virtual financial summit called the Cashflow Wealth Summit uh, that we have coming up next month. It is uh, kind of the event of the year. This is our third year doing it. And this year, we're trying to really go all, all out on it. And some of the keynote speakers that we have uh, are... Man, it's it's awesome. I can't wait to to listen to these presentations. Uh, the first one is by Richard Duncan. Uh, he is a very renowned economist and uh, lives in Asia. Really, really cool guy. Has some fascinating books. Has a has a totally different take. He's a free market guy, but he has a totally different take on uh, really you know how economic how the uh, economy and economics works in this you know twenty twenty first century. Uh, but anyway, he's he's gonna be one of the keynotes. Uh, Cameron Harold, who uh, was the CEO of or COO of one eight hundred Got Junk, and he's also written a number of books on company operations, company cultures, meeting. Fascinating guy. I love listening to him. I uh, love watching his stuff online. So he's going to be one of the keynotes as well as uh, Jarek Robbins, who is uh, Tony Robbins' son. He's going to be one of our keynotes as well. But we have you know speakers like uh, Jeff Schneider, uh, uh, Craig Ballantyne, uh, Tucker Max of Book in the Box uh, will be speaking as well. I, he, he's uh, the one that's doing uh, the, the book with me right now, or his, his company is. So anyway, the, the, and there's so many more. We're going to be announcing them over the next couple of weeks. But if uh, if you would like to register, go to www.cashflowwealthsummit.com. Uh, we have a referral program where you can, uh, you know, win some cool, cool prizes. Uh, there's also paid tiers this year, so we have, it's all free. Uh, so if you come live, you don't have to pay anything. Uh, but we do have kind of some uh, some special programs with uh, signed books and access to previous years' summits. So anyway, just go on to cashflowwealthsummit.com and you can see the details uh, for for that. Anyway, we'll put we'll have more announcements over the next uh, coming weeks. Uh, uh, if you are not subscribed to uh, our mail list, our email list, go to, actually don't go anywhere, just just uh, email us at info at paradigmlife.net uh, and just ask to uh, to subscribe. I think we have some subscribe on our uh, on our uh, uh, show notes page or our blog of the podcast. So go there too. So cashflowwellsummit.com. I'm sure you can find a way to uh, to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, so let's let's get to Mike, but you know, really Mike is an uh, incredible guy. It's a video podcast. So if you are listening to this right now, you can go into YouTube and, and watch the video. Uh, but I know Mike for a number of years. Uh, him and I went through kind of some hard times at the same time. We uh, both found a ton of in- inspiration from very similar books as well as uh, events and trainings that we went to jointly. He's just an amazing guy. This was a really cool interview. It's actually over an hour long, but we get into some really cool t- uh, cool things that we've been discussing uh, when we were uh, out at a, a convention together. But anyway, super cool guy. Awesome interview. He's the author of What the Rockefellers Do. So you can go to his website. We'll link all, all we'll link all that in the in the show notes. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to the interview. We'll talk to you guys next week. How's it going, everybody? This is Patrick Donahoe coming to you. I have no idea what episode this is, but it's episode something one hundred ninety something. Uh, but I'm here with a really good friend of mine. Uh, we're actually doing a video podcast. So if you are listening to this, go to our YouTube channel if you want to check out some major eye candy right here next to me. Uh, but uh, I'm excited to be with my good buddy, uh, Mike Isom. Uh, Mike and I have known each other for a number number of years. We actually did a podcast a few months ago, six months ago. No, it was like last, it was actually last, yeah, it was last uh, summer. And it was, uh, yeah, that was an interesting one because we tried to do it at an airport and it didn't really pull it off that great. <laughs> it was like we got interrupted every, like, what, every two or three minutes. We had somebody on the loudspeaker, so we had to stop and start and stop and start. So, Kind of a, a sporadic uh, podcast, but this one is going to be much better. We are actually uh, in uh, Lisbon, Portugal, and yeah, we may get some interruptions. So hopefully, we're we're at a, a, just a hotel at a convention that we're uh, both attending. But anyway, we decided uh, we wanted to take some of the conversations we've been having over the course of the last few days and bring them to you through uh, our podcast. So first, Mr. Michael, welcome. Thank you. You're, yeah, look, you're looking good. Fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. A little time change, but uh, yeah. getting used to it, and then we'll turn around and fly back. Yeah, we're actually flying back tomorrow, and so yeah, yeah. Jet, jet lag is is a, is a mother sometimes. All right, so 
really it, so let's let's kind of get into get into our topic right because okay. i think we're going to spend a ton of time ton of time on this uh, but you and i in our, our background we I kind of knew, uh, even before I got into kind of the financial services industry, I, I knew uh, knew you. Uh, but really after the 2008-2009 debacle, that's when we became uh, a lot closer because you and I attended uh, a training in Houston, Texas uh, by our good friend. Uh, I consider a mentor. I'm sure you do too. But sure. our good friend and mentor, Kim Butler. And, uh, and that's when we really started to hit it off because you were going through some transitionary times. Um, I was... And really, we have a very uh, similar philosophy about life and growth and pushing ourselves and uh, helping people. Uh, and we're also in a very kind of atypical type of uh, financial uh, strategy type of environment. So uh, looking at you and I and seeing the tremendous amount of growth that you've had, uh, I think we both kind of look at really the the means and the uh, dynamic that it took to get there in a very similar way. And that's what we were talking about today, because I would say, you know, you would way more than me, but you, you go to these uh, extreme lengths to push yourself. Right. Sure. And, and there's a reason be, behind that. And I think yeah. there's, you know, there's an internal reason. There's also kind of an external reason, but if you really look at, you know, people that do really amazing things, they're always different. Yeah. And it, and it really comes down to what is dry, what is driving you? Um, why do you do what you do? What gets you up in the morning? And, and then where do you, you know, once you achieve something, what's, what is next? So that's that's gonna be the topic today. Yeah. Are you stoked? Yeah, we have a lot to say on this. Hopefully, it like doesn't bomb, and we have some good good energy. <laughs> so you better bring it. So I know it's a little bit early. We in the have that, so we'll, we'll pull it back out again. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. So yeah, so why don't you maybe give a little bit of background for listeners and okay. kind of talk about you know where you've come from and then what you're doing right now? Okay. Yeah, I'm Mike Lysom, and I've been in the financial services industry now for 17 years, and like Patrick said, met him I think 07. It was around the first year that I uh, associated with you in, in any form or fashion. But uh, we've come back together over the years and associated a lot in the last four or five years, definitely. I'm married 23 years, two kids, 18, 21 now. And I, like Patrick was saying, we've, we've been on this topic of, of growth and abundance and stabilizing abundance and, and then once we, we accomplish something, like what's the next level and what challenges us, what challenges me, what fulfills me, what creates the most for me, creates the most for others. And I have found extreme joy in this pursuit of stop stopping. Meaning once, once, I, once I get a hold of something and I achieve something, it's what's next and what's next. And so there's a lot of self-interest in that, but in that self-interest, it's not only what fulfills me, but in being fulfilled the most, it creates the most for those around me. Mm -hmm. And so really what I hear you saying, Patrick, and what we've been talking about the last couple of days, we've been walking around and seeing these amazing historical sites. And, and, and I mention all of this because it didn't used to be that way for me, meaning I, I'd had in my life that mindset and that paradigm of thinking that way, and that I didn't have it in my life. And I shrunk and I went into uh, scarcity and, in a major way. And, and then I pulled myself out of scarcity and I started stabilizing abundance again in my life. And that's why I brought it up to you the other day when we were walking because it's been on my mind a lot where I started stabilizing abundance again. It's like, okay, what's next? And what brought me out of scarcity up to abundance? Mm -hmm. And what can I learn from that? What lessons can I extract? And that's really kind of the topic that we're going to touch on today is the lessons that have been pulled from going from scarcity to abundance. And so I'm thrilled to do this podcast. I absolutely love the pursuit of a challenged based lifestyle. And again, to stop stopping and to keep that continuation going. And that's what I was going to say. I mean, the main, the main thing I just took from what you said is, you know, the, you have, I think we're, we're taught that uh, you set a goal and then you achieve a goal and it's this like there's this ending point right this stopping point as you as you uh, as you just alluded to and and I think that's that's 
it's not uh, that's not part of human nature because human nature is a continual growth. Uh, it's not these. I mean, there's a series of different steps, but you have to look at this end result. And I think most people will attest it to. Well, once I have this job, or once I make this amount of money, or once I have I live in this neighborhood, or once I do this, and once I, it's like somehow you've arrived, and you don't have to do anything else. And I think that is completely false and it's just it's that that idea is deceiving Mm -hmm. Uh, but what you're really saying is that you know it is kind of this kind of perpetual uh, perpetual growth where you're hitting phases but it's never it's never going to end Uh, but a lot of what we've talked about is really you know as you put it there's these moments that you've had as far as anxiety or uh, uh, scarcity is concerned where you find yourself in this moment where things didn't turn out the way that you had hoped for. Uh, and for most people, it's kind of this like, it's you know fight or flight. Most people fly, right? They'll, they take off, right? They hide. Uh, but for those that really understand the principle of growth, when you face those adverse moments or those scarce moments, you realize that in that challenge is is really where the, the jewel of growth is and facing it and tackling it uh, full, full on. And then once you realize that it's kind of like the next, you know, your next phase, once you have achieved that you know, specific level, your next phase of life or whatever, uh, it's, it has to be a different type of environment, right? It can't be the same because you've already achieved the same. Now you're going to go hit another level. So I mean, with you, what are some of the stuff that, what are some of the things that you have done maybe in the last like two, three years that have pushed your limits where you found yourself where you've achieved something, okay, you hit some level, but then you realize that I need to do something else and you chose to do something else. I'm very deliberate about going in 90 day increments throughout my year. So it's a 90 day challenge. This came from our good friend Garrett White from Wake Up Warrior. And it's every 90 days where I'm challenging myself and, and and we think about a challenge in your own life, and and if you're feeling this, like if you're watching this or listening to us, if if you're finding yourself bored, bored in any way, shape, or form, then really like pay attention because I found myself bored before, and in that boredom, I will consciously or subconsciously create chaos in my life in all areas of my life, personally or professionally. So I can go back in and challenge myself again. Mm-hmm. We're using this word challenge, but it's also about, about creating and growing and expanding. So think about your own life. And this is what I've learned. You're asking me like what I've learned or what lessons I've taken away from this. I'm very clear today, Patrick, that when I am constantly creating in my life in every area, personally and professionally, when I'm growing from that creation and overall expansion in every area of my life, It's what fulfills me in my core. Mm -hmm. And when I'm fulfilled in my core personally, I have the most to offer to you, to my wife, to my kids, to my clients, Mm -hmm. to my friends, to my family, to someone else. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very clear that why would I ever stop that? Why would I ever stop looking for challenges in every area of my life to grow Mm -hmm. personally and professionally, to take it to that next level? And I hope to do that the rest of my life. Well, I think, yeah, and, and from what I've, what I've seen, I can't remember where this quote, quote came from, and I'm going to totally botch the quote, but it, it's the idea that your your ultimate happiness and fulfillment and joy is going to come from your best impacting the life of somebody else. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and I think that, you know, the what your best is isn't this end, right? It's a, it's a continual thing. But I think most people look at, you know, I have to sacrifice my life for my kids, or I have to sacrifice my time to do things that I don't want to do, or this idea of sacrifice and, and I think that's very deceptive to an extent, right? Because what you end up doing is you're not living all out. You're not all you are, all you can be. Uh, and therefore, you're not that for your kids and your circle of influence, right? So I look at, you know, really what you do to whether it's, you know, work out or go to events or, you know, go to these different challenges. You're looking at it really not for your own self gratification. Well, you kind of are, right? But you're doing it by recognizing the fact that you know who you are and how you influence others. Uh, you're going to be able to influence them more, provide more, create more value for them at that at those higher levels, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. makes total sense. So you are extreme. Like, what are some of the extreme things that you've that you've done that you're willing to divulge? 
that you kind of like pushed yourself and tested yourself really to push those, push those barriers? Yeah. Well, I have done all sorts of fitness things in my life. I'm currently participating in off-road racing and this August will be the third off-road race that I've done for this year. And it will be from Las Vegas, Nevada to Reno, Nevada. It'll be a 540 mile off-road desert race with someone else in the car. Gary White's going to do that race with me. And we're going to go nonstop 540 miles in the Nevada desert in August. And there's a lot of preparation and everything that goes into that to be mm-hmm. able to pull something off uh, mentally and physically. I've participated in Navy SEAL fit courses where I've exhausted my mind and body at extreme levels. And the perspective that I gain as a result of pushing myself to those new levels, number one, I, 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 an, an immense amount of appreciation in my own life for what is, mm-hmm. for the for the material things, the mental things that are in my life, for my mindset, and it, it assists me in taking it to the next level. And so I, I just see that continually being a progression in my life. I uh, love traveling, I love uh, uh, taking classes with my wife on relationship, definitely all sorts of business classes mm-hmm. and things to that level to just continue to grow because it's it's in that growth and you had mentioned earlier or we we had mentioned before about this stabilizing abundance in our life and then to go beyond abundance into prosperity it then becomes more of a focus I found to then not only search for more growth but then search for making contributions in other people's lives. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's where, and I think that one of the conversations we had revolved around this idea of uh, your your greatest fulfillment is that contribution to somebody else, right? And really, the idea behind consumption, right, is if you don't do that, right, it's going to stagnate. And so we use. I, mean, I, I always look at it as you know, kind of like plants or you know, vegetation where they mm-hmm. consume nutrients. They're in the soil. They consume the sun and water and so forth. Uh, but what they do is they produce uh, flowers and then seeds. And so it's, there's a perpetual growth. Those seeds go into the ground, more flowers, and that whole process continues. But if it wasn't able to produce seeds, it would, it would die, mm-hmm. right? So the idea behind human nature is that we consume a lot. I mean, we're consuming energy right now. We're consuming water. We're cons- we, we consume, but if we don't end up taking what we're consuming and actually being of value to someone else, then we are going to are going to stagnate. And then you brought up the point that you know those that create the most typically consume the most. Maybe talk about that for a second. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So con- consumers and producers, and I mentioned to Patrick the other night at dinner that producers are among the biggest consumers out there. But they understand that in consuming a lot, they're always going to produce more than they consume. Mm-hmm. Versus consumers consume more than producers, or consumers consume more than they produce. Yeah. And so, again, it comes down to self-interest. Mm-hmm. And I do all of this, I'm here with you right now because of the growth that comes into my life, being here and doing this podcast and sharing. Mm-hmm. And so out of self-interest, I'm here doing this. But out of that self-interest, I also recognize at a deeper level that when I'm contributing, also, that's the highest spiritual need that can be fulfilled within myself. So I'm seeking fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I'm seeking fulfillment personally, knowing that at the highest level, it's creating the most for those around me. It's like, I I, I write this and I talk to clients about it and and communicate that it's the most beautiful win-win that I know of. So what do you think, now let's kind of gravitate toward the, the audience. Because there, there are many that I think would would maybe understand what we're talking about, and, and to an extent we understand it. But for all of us, including ourselves, at least including me, 
there's there's a barrier of fear, especially when it comes to approaching that next level, right? Because everyone's sure. at a level right now. You yeah. consume a certain amount, you produce a certain amount, but then there's this barrier that you have to break through in order to get to that next level. And I had a fascinating like two and a half hour conversation last night uh, at dinner with somebody else, really talking about those barriers. And I have, you know, from that conversation, plus some of my own uh, experiences, I, you know, kind of have an idea, but I want to hear what you say. What do you, what do you see as, you know, that a person hitting that, that ceiling, that glass ceiling, they hit it. And what is typically the, the preventing piece from getting them to uh, the next, the next level? Well, you mentioned fear yeah. and I, I used to think that it didn't have to be tough. I get hear people talk about, ah, oh, it's you know, I've got to have this challenge and it's got to be really tough for me to be able to accomplish it. And I used to shy away from that and tell all these experiences that I've had, especially in the last 10 years, where some of my greatest learning is some of the deepest fulfillment. So I'll take I'll give you an example of parenting. We were talking about this too of parenting. Uh, with my kids being 18 and 21, I share with them them now the perspective that I'm excited for them to have the opportunity to experience being a mother or a father. It's one of the hardest things that I've ever experienced in my life, being a father. Mm -hmm. And as a result of it being that tough, it's brought the most joy into my life. So when, I, when I'm going into something, and I don't anticipate or see everything, but then something is super challenging, there's a lot of fear, I'm really nervous, you know, the first time I went to really do that, that, that uh, speaking, public speaking, large audience, and there was a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, that's what charged me up the most. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that I run towards it, but I don't shy away from it like I used to because I know that in that fear, in that really big challenge is what's going to fulfill me the most. And just like parenting, oh my goodness, uh, some of the hardest moments of my entire life have been not only only around being married, but being being a parent, being a father, and watching my son or my daughter go through something or experiencing something with them. But as a result, the deepest love and joy and fulfillment that I've ever received in my entire life as a result of that. Now, here's here's something that we we started to have a conversation about, and maybe we can finish it right now. But when you were when you were talking about that, I brought up the point where you, with your children, I mean, you're, I think you have a love for your children that you'll have for no no other human being on earth, right? And I'm not sure how you how you really categorize or define that, but something that you know came essentially from you to an extent, and it is fully dependent on you for living life, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. They uh, there's a bond there's a bond there. It's super profound. But that love creates this idea of I don't want anything bad to happen to them, right? The the thing that pains me the most is like mm. seeing something happen to my child, right? That is that, that's bad. And I gave you that example of my, he, I think he was uh, probably eighteen months, twenty months. Uh, my my son, and we were at this like you know discovery place, like a museum, and there's this like older kid that came over and wanted to like play with something and pushed him out of the way, and like. Like the reaction was, oh, I'm gonna kill you, but, you know, to the other, to the other kid, right? So it's you. You have this. I don't want to see my kids go through anything bad. It's kind of like you want them in a bubble and protected from really everything. But that is pretty much the worst thing that could happen when it comes to uh, actual growth. So how do you? And this is where you know it might be a good point to transition to that whole like balance of um you know the whole scarcity and, and abundance where you don't have this kind of polar opposite you have a, a constant balance between you know having a, a scarce environment that is uh, painful or fearful or challenging right but you're also pursuing that abundant idea because if you're full if full mode scarcity bad full mode abundance bad it's really the balance because full mode abundance you're not growing full mode scarcity you're not growing either it's really the balance of the two and it's a continual kind of back and forth balance over time right yeah and and as you're saying all of that patrick i i would like to bring in the topic of money and finance into this whole conversation and how money and finance influences us in such a major way in our life of extreme scarcity extreme abundance abundance and everywhere in between and prosperity and all this stuff 
And so I, I will, I'll ask all of you, look at your life and look at how money and finance is affecting you. Is it keeping you in scarcity? Is it allowing you to grow in abundance? Like where is it for you in your life? And have you asked yourself that question and are you clear about it? Do you have a set of, of rules and principles and guidelines in your, in your life around money? And are you gambling with money? Is that keeping you in scarcity? Or do you have this certainty around money that allows you to grow more in abundance? And so how is money affecting you in your own life? And how do you want it to affect you in your life? Because we can use it as this multiplier tool to allow us to create at a higher level. And in that creation at a higher level, it's what fulfills us at a deeper level. Yeah. And when we're fulfilled at a deeper level, we can create mo more for those around us. So related to business owners and if business owners have their money in areas that create more certainty for them mentally, they can produce at a higher level in their own business. They can have a deeper, more meaningful, connective relationship. It's like being on this trip right now. Given the situation and the structure of my money and my financial planning, and my business and the other areas of my life, I'm able to be here, I'm able to be connected in this podcast right now mm -hmm. and have this conversation, connect with my wife at a deeper level and not be uh, fearful at a very high level around my money that allows me, so, so I'll, I, I talk to my clients all the time, Patrick, in this way, and I've written articles about, I want my clients to take a lot of risk and I don't want my clients to take any risk whatsoever. My clients are going to take any risk. If I'm going to take any risk, it's going to be an area that I control. And if I'm going to relinquish control of my cash, so another lesson that I've learned going through what I've gone through over the years, if I'm going to relinquish control of my cash somewhere else, I want that money to be guaranteed. I want it protected. I want it liquid to use back into the areas that I control. And the areas that I'm going to take some risk in are that next marketing plan in my own business or hiring another employee or an associate or somewhere mm -hmm. where I control it. I have the most knowledge, the most expertise. And this whole conversation that we're having today is reminding me yet again of the areas that I can grow the most, which are areas that I control, that I have the most knowledge, expertise, and passion in. And the areas that I don't, then with my money especially, I wanna make sure that I keep it in an environment that supports me to be able to create in the higher levels, the higher levels in my life. Well, I would say also that you know, m money, in a sense, is it, it represents the it's a measure it's a measurement, right? It's one of the best measurements because it's a, it's a universal measurement, mm -hmm. and it measures what you've done, what you have uh, produced. Now, obviously, using it and you know benefiting your family and and. Uh, you know, making investments and that, that's one thing. But I would say just in general, if you look at your, uh, the money you bring in, it's a representation of what you've done. And if you are deficient there, right, it's not that you're deficient in money, you're deficient in what you've actually produced. And it's a perfect measurement of that whole consumption and production because everyone is consuming to produce in a, in a certain extent, whether you pay a mortgage or you pay uh, your credit card bills, you pay for food, you pay for a vacation, you're consuming right now. That's proof of it. But if you are deficient, meaning you are consuming more than you're producing, that there is going to be challenges uh, ahead very, very quickly. So the idea, you know, really what we're trying to get across here is that, uh, you know, regardless of where you're at, it's, it's going to change. And you have two choices. You can accept that or you can reject it. If you accept it, then there's a way in which you create your environment to get to the next level. If you reject it, you're just going to find that new level, but it's going to come in a lot more painful manner, right? So the idea behind what Mike is saying is that, you know, if you are finding yourself, and right now, you know, stock markets are at all-time highs. Businesses are, are doing well to an extent. Uh, we've had the longest, you know, uh, bull run uh, in history. Housing, stock market. Right now, there's kind of this euphoric feeling where people feel like, wow, I'm doing good. I'm at that, you know, glass ceiling and, you know, I don't need, I don't need to, you know, do, do much. I'm going to kind of sit back and relax and, and take it easy. That's probably the worst thing that you can do, right? Uh, and there, therefore, it's kind of like people taking risk and especially putting money with others. That is, I don't know, that's a dynamic that is very, um, very risky to an extent. 
And because what you're doing is you're really giving it to, you know, you're giving it to somebody else that you don't have necessarily uh, control over. But looking at you, you deal mostly with business owners. It's really taking that and investing in yourself and earning uh, returns, whether it's on marketing or taking your business to a, a higher extent. You're trying to grow your money. That's one of the best ways to do it because that's what you know. That's what your expert expertise is. Right. And then the proof of it is going to be really what your balance sheet financial statement shows at the end of the day. Uh, but, you know, really looking at those that are kind of at this maybe plateau and are looking to get to the next level. I think one of the the worst ways to do it is finding a new investment. I need to have to invest here. I need to invest there. That's not the next the next level. Right. The next level, especially for business owners and entrepreneurs, is uh, is yourself. So typically when you like if you have a, a client that has, is at that plateau, what are the things that you've seen that has helped like get them break through? Break through? Because yeah. if you're like, I have a bunch of money in the bank, my business is doing awesome, you know, there's there's gonna be Tony Robbins talks about this a lot, but there's gonna be an area that they're not fulfilled in, right? All areas of life, you're never gonna be have this like perfectly balanced, you know, wheel as he puts it, right? Everything's gonna be kind of clunky in one area or the next. So how do you get them to kind of realize that and then break through to get them to kind of push through to that next level? Yeah. First and foremost, and I'm I'm so thankful that I have this in my life right now today, is to create a habit. We're all 100% disciplined to our existing set of habits. So create a habit, become disciplined to that habit of stopping on a regular basis and celebrating and appreciating what is. It was yesterday, we're in the castle, I go out and I sit down, I'm by myself, get a little uh, uh, coffee here that they have and one of their little famous desserts. Oh my goodness, amazing <laughs> here in Europe, especially here in Portugal. And I sit down on my phone and I start typing out what I celebrate, and what I appreciate, and just this overwhelming sense of peace and fulfillment came over me to just stop, look back at where I came from in my life to where I'm at right now. I'm here, I was in, you know, yesterday in Portugal, the city and the environment is beautiful and with my wife and connecting with, with you and your wife, Patrick, and other people here, it's just an amazing experience. So I'd encourage each of you, we're gonna all go through life, Dan Sullivan, strategic coach, taught me this years ago, we're gonna all go through life and we're gonna be extremely successful we're either going to be happy or we're going to be miserable. And if we'll stop on a regular basis, we've heard this in many different forms, the gratitude journal. I like the words that empower me of celebrating and appreciating. Appreciation, you think about something appreciating and value. And so I'll write down what I celebrate, what I appreciate. And that's the single biggest thing that I've found to help me break through to that next level Hmm. is to stop on a regular basis, celebrate and appreciate personally and professionally what is is in my life. And sometimes I'll go back the last week, the last 30 days, the last year, the last five years, the last 10 years with my kids, uh, my wife, uh, personally, professionally. And that's one of the single biggest things that helps me create at a higher level is to stop, slow down a little bit, look back over a time in my life, personally or professionally, and celebrate where I've come from to where I'm at. And that helps me break through. But then the next thing, so once once I've done that, and I'll continue to do that uh, weekly, daily, but then then I look for areas that challenge me. So I consider myself to have a challenge-based lifestyle, personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. And I'll look for areas that really challenge me, that create a little fear of, Ooh, wow, can I do that? And if I do, what? And, and and so it's a continual thing. There's once I get it, it's okay, what's next? And what's next? And it's okay. I used to think that I had to be able to just arrive and just totally well, I do. I stop on a regular basis and, and appreciate and celebrate, but then I'm on to the next thing. And then I stop and I appreciate and celebrate. And then the next thing, because it's what fulfills me the most, it's what creates the most for those around me. So Celebrate and appreciate on a regular basis. Create that habit. Be disciplined to it. And then think and think of areas that challenge you personally and professionally. And create games. I also like games around it. I like to gamify things. Hmm. And, and put keep numbers score. to it. Yeah, keep score. 
and and that helps me too. How about yourself? Well, so so I wanted to identify two things, and I'll kind of you know just, I have some similarities as uh, to to what you do, but I think really what you said is being being present to where you where you are. What it does it helps you see where you've come come from, mm-hmm. right? And you see, wow, I've I was here, now I'm or I was there, now I'm I'm here. It's basically kind of proof that you've gone from uh, a lower level to a, a higher level. Now you're not at a higher level yet, but what it does is it just shows that wow, I I came from some place that um, I'm not at right now. Mm-hmm. There's so it's the appreciation of that progression occurring in some way yeah so you so it's the identification of that because i think that we're all there right we've all progressed every everybody that's listening you've progressed beyond a certain beyond a certain level so it's proof that you can progress beyond where you're at right now right Mm -hmm. so the second thing is you recognize that there's an environment that is conducive to you right it may not be for everybody i don't don't know if i have to go like drive 500 miles in the desert to you know to get to the next (laughs) to the next level i've never done it so it's hard for me to you know to advertise yeah um but i would say that you understand the environment of how to grow yeah right and that's i mean we've i've talked in the podcast before about the second law of thermodynamics as far as how energy uh transforms i don't know if you've ever heard it but there's an example that Blair Singer uses. Mm-hmm. He basically says, you know, if a if a tree falls in the forest, right, it's an environment, one environment. It falls in the forest, it becomes kind of part of the forest, becomes part of the vegetation, it becomes part of the nutrients that feed other trees. But if a tree falls in a swamp, it's a different environment. And so in a different environment, the outcome of that environment is going to be way different than the forest floor. Sure. The outcome is eventually going to be coal, okay? Mm-hmm. And then from coal you get diamonds, right? So you go from like becoming part of the forest to one of the rarest uh, stones on on earth, right? So the idea, it's the environment. And so if you want to have a profound uh, transition, the environment has to be kind of swampy, meaning there has to be lots of adversity. Because in a swamp, what do you have? You have like tons of organisms, you have tons of stuff going on that's impacting that organism, right? So the idea in, you know, kind of human life is putting yourself in an environment that is putting so much pressure. It's not pressure to break you, but it's pressure to put you on this kind of trajectory to the next, to the next level. So you recognize what that is for for you. But I would say that measurement is, is a good thing. Quantitative measurement. That's what I was saying before about money. Money is an easy measurement. Uh, And if you recognize the fact that, you know, the money in your financial situation is because of you, then you're going to recognize if you want more of that, it's not the money that has to change, right? It's you that has to change. Because most people go roll the dice and play the lottery and they're going to, or that luck is on their side and they're going to somehow have more money by doing the exact same thing. It never works out in the end, okay? In any circumstance, really, right? You're always worse off if you don't go through the natural progression. And that progression is really going from one stage of life to the next, the next stage of life. But that's, that's me. I do the same, kind of the same thing. And I think, you know, oftentimes I look at adversity that occurs to me and I look at it with uh, the natural kind of human reaction context, which is, oh, crap, now I have to deal with this stuff. But you and I had a conversation the other day, with, which is there is no definition of your circumstances. OK, there is no pre-definition of that. It, it is. It's just the way that it is. Yeah. You then put a category on it. Right. You say, freak, this sucks or wow, this is going to really it helped me. It's a challenging moment. And me five years ago would like totally freak out. But me today recognizes that this is that environment. This is that pressure that's going to get me to the next level. Mm-hmm. Then you are able to measure it, right? And you can start to celebrate that pressure yeah. more than before. 100%. Versus running away from it, you're running into it. For sure. Yeah. So tell us, what really intrigues me is you use these, I know Garrett, uh, you use a program that Garrett has to do these kind of 90-day sprints or these 90-day yeah. challenges. challenges. Tell us a little bit about, about that. Maybe there's some uh, you know parts of that that our, our listeners can, can use. Yeah. So uh, what Patrick's talking about is Wake Up Where with Garrett White and it's body, being, balance, and business. And every 90 days, I'm setting a, a challenge in each one of those areas. So with my body, it's around fitness and nutrition. What's going to push me to the next level or challenge me around my body? And I've done, uh, so I have the off-road racing going on right now. I've done CrossFit challenges in the past. I've done cleanses before for my body to the food intake i have meal preparation that takes place and i'm very specific about the supplements that i take now 
And those habits that I create as a result of that, the, I'll adopt them and keep them and others that I'll, I won't and I'll uh, take on other other things, you know, other habits that I'll bring in. Mm-hmm. And so if it's not working too well, then I'll let it go and I'll bring in another one. So body and then being is my spirituality. And uh, I had never before considered meditation as a form of uh, spiritual fulfillment for me, but I meditate on a daily basis now. And there's a lot of self-interest around that. I went to, went to a meditation retreat in St. Louis oh, with wow. some Ashaya monks. Huh. I never experienced anything like that. Interesting. And I journal a lot. That's part of my beingness is, is to journal more. Uh, and, I, and I use that as a legacy tool also. So body, being, and then balance. Balance is my relationships. And I'll focus every 90 days more than any other relationship on one person. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it's been my wife multiple times, my kids. kids. And I'll share something really personal, Patrick. Um, my father passed away three and a half, just over three years ago. And I, I thank God all the time for having this in my life because... 90 days prior to my father passing away, I made him the focus of your relationship. And it was a Tuesday morning, February uh, 2014. And I was driving into the office. I was thinking about my dad because he's on my mind more than ever before as a a focus daily in that area. And, and, And the voice told me, the gut feeling, the intuition said, hey, call dad and invite him to the office today. Because it was the next day, Wednesday, that was a Tuesday. On Wednesday, my wife and I were flying to Chicago to go to Lifebook. Mm-hmm. And that Tuesday morning, I got I got the gut feeling, the intuition. I called him up. He came into the office. We spent some time together. He loved being around me. He loved that I would call him to come in and visit. He was 70 years old. And we had a great time together. I gave him a big hug, told him that I loved him. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but that was the last time that I would have seen my dad live because it was that Saturday night that he passed away unexpectedly. And so being more than ever before, focusing on our relationships, whether it's, it's a close friend, a family member, I've made it with, I've done it with my kids where I've spent more time than ever before with one of my kids to create an experience, to go on a trip with them, to do something just a little bit extra than I'm currently doing. I've written letters to my kids where I'll roll it up on a scroll and burn the edges of the paper on a parchment paper. Mm-hmm. And what I write to them is what I see in you. And so that's that's balance, relationships. And then business, a body being balanced in business. It's a core four in Wake Up Warrior. Mm-hmm. And the business aspect is what are the areas that challenge me? What are the areas where I can take it to the next level, not only fulfill myself, but create the most in my office, with team members in my office, certainly with my clients, what new creation, what, you know, doing a podcast like this, and what a great contribution, Patrick, for you to be able to do a podcast, to bring on guests, to to extend this value in such a great way, but it also fulfills you yep. and keeps you studying and keeps sharp. you on point, keeps you sharp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so body being balanced in business, that's a focus of mine on a daily basis. So, and but that daily basis comes from Every 90 days, you sit right. down yeah, and redo and re and refocus. Yep. So looking yep. at, you know, so let's say of those of those focus points, is there ever a time where you have not like achieved it, right? You, sure. you missed you miss the yep. mark. Yep. And I was thinking about this earlier in our discussion. And again, this came from Discoveries with Garrett White and Wake Up Warrior. And if if we're to if we're to use this progression of we're here, it's like a four thousand year old like I know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so if we're here and we're on, we're on our way up to here, whatever this is up here, on our way up there, things are going to happen. They're not going to work out. We're not going to hit the mark. And I call it drifting. Some sort of drift has occurred that's pulled me off of that, or I haven't hit the target up here. Well, whenever that occurs. And I fall back down for whatever reason, mentally, physically, emotionally. When I'm here, if I don't extract the lesson of what happened, then I'm going to go right back up to here. Hmm. And then some time will go by and all of a sudden something else will happen. And if I don't extract the lesson down here, I'm going to go back up here. 
But I now have a regular practice where I ask myself a series of questions and I extract the lessons and it brings me back up to here. And so it's not that it's not that I'm um, not going to have challenges, meaning that I'm going to miss the mark or not hit the goal or have frustrations or disappointments or get in a fight with my wife or have an argument. Those things are going to continue to occur in my life. I'm not always going to hit it 100 percent. But if I'll extract the lesson and be disciplined to extracting the lesson, that other lesson could be more powerful than actually hitting the goal itself. And as a result of extracting that lesson and having a habit in my life of extracting the lesson and then applying it in my life, I progress at a lot further rate. And again, all of that, extracting the lesson and applying it in my life, fulfills me at the deepest level and creates the most for those around me. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where if you, you know, clearly define something, now you understand what the really the intention was by clearly defining it. Then you look at kind of what, what it's going to take to, uh, you know, to work on that on a, on a daily basis. But, but then I think one of the dynamics which you, which you haven't talked about is the idea of, uh, of accountability. Right now, there's there are those that are wired so that they're accountable to you know themselves, and that's all that they really need. That's not me all the time, mm-hmm. but level of commitment. yeah, it's a level level of commitment. But when you when you do have the environment where there is somebody that maybe you have admiration or respect for, because I think if it's somebody that's that's not on the same level as you, and they're holding you accountable, it's not going to be the same. Right. The accountability comes from those that may be a step ahead. That's where I found the most amount of accountability were those that, you know, have achieved, have done uh, certain things that I that I haven't. And me challenging myself and then them holding me accountable to it is has been really huge for me. That's just one of those mm-hmm. kind of one of those ways in which I uh, am pulled to, to grow. Mm-hmm. What, are, what are some of the ways in which you do your accountability? Yeah. And, and Patrick, I think we're talking about the same thing here, but I'm going to interject some other words that I've been using lately around that topic of accountability. And I love associating with you. I love having conversations with you because you inspire me. Mm-hmm. And it's through that inspiration that I uh, look at different areas of my life and create at different levels and in different ways as a result of being around you and, and, and being inspired by you. And then as far as accountability is concerned, it comes down to my level of commitment and clarity around what I'm going after. Okay. Because if I'm clear, like if I have this deep amount of clarity around what I want, game over. Like you think about the things that you just been crystal clear, burning passion around what you want, no accountability from someone else. You make it happen. Mm -hmm. You go after it, you make it happen. And so my association with others inspires me and assists me in gaining clarity because I'll look at what you've done and how you've done it. Then it'll help me tweak what I'm doing and how I'm doing things. And it inspires me and I learn from that. And it deepens my why around why I'm doing what I'm doing. And when I have that deeper why and clarity around what I'm doing, game over. And so it's my level of commitment around something. Because if I'm committed versus just being interested, game over. I make it happen. But if I'm just interested and I'm not like all in. Like I've burned the bridges behind me. There's no retreating. Burn the ships. Burn the ships. Yep. Yep. Behind me. There's no retreating. I'm either going to sink or swim. Then I make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I can look back over my life at the areas where I was and I was not. And it's, it's very clear to me. And so that's been a focus here lately for me is my level of commitment towards something. Because when I have the, when I am committed Versus just being interested in it, game over, and make it happen. Well, one of the so I look at that level of accountability as inspiration in my life. And I and this is this is me kind of like pro, you know, profiling you, um, but it's but this is where I see this is where I see you, and it's it's me to an extent in a healthy is, way. In a oh, very healthy way, profiling me in a healthy yeah, way. So it, it's no other way right? <laughs> okay. Well, you define it. You know, that's right. That's right. Okay. Good. <laughs> just well, but, I, but I would say this is what, you know, this is why I have a tremendous amount of admiration and respect for you because you, uh, you associate with certain people that drive you. You mm-hmm. don't, and I, again, I don't know, I, we know each other really, really well. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're doing like on a day to day, hour to hour basis, 
But from what I've seen and observed, you are associating with people that will, uh, I don't want to say push you, but they will, will inspire you inspire to do you. amazing, sure. amazing things. Because they're doing that themselves. For sure. Yeah. And I high would, level. And another thing, too, that I would observe, and this kind of goes to a point we made just a, a little bit ago, where uh, as far as fear is concerned, because I think oftentimes uh, when you really look at wanting to achieve, you are driven to do that. You want to do it. You know you have conviction and faith that you can do it, but it's really how you look, what will they say about you, what will your you know, neighbors say, what will your colleagues say, what will your parents say, what will your, right? And it's, mm-hmm. and that's where sometimes those sort of things hold, hold people back, yeah. right? So I would say, you know, that comes down to who you associate with, who your group of friends are, who your group of, col- group of colleagues are. In that environment, that has a, in my, in my opinion, has a tremendous amount to do with how hard you push yourself. Because I love, with me, I love going, I love being inspired. I love seeing people accomplish and achieve. There, there's nothing more that, that gets, that gets to me. Cause it, it helps me realize, wow, that's possible. That person achieved. They broke a barrier. They, they pushed through a challenge. I've seen that with you in a number, a number of different ways, but that was at least my observation looking at, you know, who you've associated with, especially over the last few years and how that's taken you to new levels. For sure. Yeah. And you mentioned that word fear again. And if we weren't clear about this earlier, I want, I want to be clear right now. I feel fear often. I feel it. But my story around fear is a lot different today because it's now a motivator. It's now an area that I'm like, okay, if I'm feeling fear, I'm feeling more alive. I know that I'm being challenged. I know that I'm going to learn something from it. I know that I'm going to extract the lesson. I know that I'm going to be more fulfilled. I know that I'm going to create more for others if I'm feeling some of that in my life versus before I'm like, ooh, no, uh uh-uh. Yeah. And run away from it. Do you agree? No, I totally, I totally agree. I mean, fear, fear is a fuel, right? Fear is like a natural, I don't think we can prevent it. I think it naturally occurs when we're either thinking or experiencing something that you know we're not really prepared for or wired for and that right there is to show you that there are levels right right now like f- we're fear of flying i don't have fear of flying right um but you know a couple of years ago we had that incident where a plane almost crashed and that made me a little bit more you know fearful <laughs> fearful uh, but i would say you know from the time that i first flew to you know, i fly a lot now i'm not i don't have that fear cuz i've done it so many times mm-hmm. right but jumping out of an airplane that would freak me freak me out yeah. right so it's really fear is always going to occur when you start to experience or think about environments that you have not pushed through to yet well so yeah and i think that it's it's a sign and it's a fuel to say wow I I can get to that place. I can get to that level. It's really what am I going to do to uh, to make to make it happen? It's all possible. Yeah, and it's a progression. It's been a progression for me. It will continue to be a progression, and each progressionary state opens up these other areas for me to feel and and experience and create at a higher and deeper level. And I love thinking about. And I don't, I don't know if we've, I've shared this with you, Patrick. But the stories that we put around things. So I, I mentioned this the story that I now, my perspective around fear versus what it was before. And that will continue to expand and grow. But to make the point quickly, if you're pissed off, you're mad, you're angry, and you get poked in the arm with a needle, what's your reaction? You know, take someone's head off. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Rage. Yeah. Uh, but then you contrast that with your you're elated, you're extremely happy, you're just pure bliss, and you get poked in the arm the exact same way. How's your reaction now? It's not as extreme. Exactly. (laughs) So we can celebrate and continue to create the environment around us. We've been talking a lot about environment through our reading, through our study, listening to podcasts like this, being inspired by others who we surround ourselves with, what we bring into our mind and our body, the way we eat and exercise, the way we set up our life to create this ability to take that arm poke and create whatever story we want around it. Because we can, on our journey up here, come down here, not do anything about it and go back up and then do just continually be in that, that, that cycle. That cycle. 
And uh, Garrett White calls it the karmic cul-de-sac, <laughs> where we're just going around and around and around and repeating the same thing in a little bit different way, but if we'll extract that lesson. And so it excites me, Patrick, even now in doing this podcast and having this discussion with you, I'm learning and growing, which adds to my ability to take that arm poke yeah. and contextualize it any way that I want. No, I mean, it's, and this is just the, many of you probably heard a lot of this, a lot of this before. Maybe this is maybe a new, new angle, a new angle to it. Uh, but in the end, I think kind of to just wrap it up, we we're all wired to grow. You can't avoid it, right? It's, it's part, it's part, part of life. And if you don't accept that, it's just going to be, it's going to be challenging because that's the story you're going to tell yourself. But really, if you recontextualize, if you kind of form your paradigm uh, with the, you know, the, the right trajectory, then now the next thing is what's the proper environment for you uh, to take you to the, the next level. And, and I think that we live just in an amazing, an amazing time. I mean, we live with so many resources at our disposal. Uh, we live in a, a communication environment where, you know, we really can do anything that, that we want. But as I look at just what is what has helped, what has helped me uh, and what kind of fuels me, and I know it does the, the same for you, is is really the way that you feel when you are at that level. Because in the end, everything that a person thinks they want, like material, whether it's like, a, you know, a house or a car or uh, flying first class or, uh, you know, going on a vacation. It has nothing to do with the actual physical experience. It has to do with the way that you, the way that you feel. Those feelings can be replicated in a lot of other situations, right? And a lot easier. But in the end, the ultimate feeling for me uh, is being of value to the, the, uh, based on who I am and what, what I am, uh, and help and helping, right? Yeah. Really providing, you know, whether it's, uh, education or inspiration of the podcast or something that, that I love to do because I love to do, I love to do this mm-hmm. and I do it because of the way it makes me feel. And then there's nothing that gets me, you know, really jazzed than, than feedback that we, that we get. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, it's right there. I mean, it, it, that's an, that's an exchange for me and it's worth every you know minute I spend doing, mm-hmm. doing this. Yeah. But in the end, I would say that, you know, really who you are, who you are, it is, you know, you are unique to, to an extent. You have those things that are special about you, your talents, your abilities. The ultimate, the, the ultimate experience you're going to have in life is figuring out how to maximize that and continue to maximize that to be a benefit to the most amount of people. Mm-hmm. And that kind of cycle, I would say, is unavoidable yeah. uh, for human beings. But right now, the resources to really kind of define and help that process be a lot more efficient, no better time than ever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, whether it's tools that you use, books, and and, and so forth. So let's maybe end with uh, end with this. What are maybe like spout them off like top like two to three books that you've read, kind of or, or uh, events you've gone to or experiences that you've had that have helped kind of form your your perspective on, on the things we've been talking about today. Talking about well, today. Uh, I, I mentioned Wake Up Warrior with Garrett White. He's been a mentor and great friend of mine over the last four and a half years. That's been really big for me. I've recently liked studying uh, Peter Diamandis mm. and uh, Abundance, his book on abundance. And uh, he has a podcast mm. and he has an event that he does. And as you're talking about that, it reminded me just real quick that, uh, and and to end with some of these thoughts, we live in an amazing time, despite what the world says, despite what the media is putting out there, we have more resources, like you're mentioning, than ever before to create, to not just uh, survive, but to thrive in an amazing way than ever before. The technology, the resources, the, the books like you're talking about, all the information that we can consume, it's up to us to decide what we want to consume. So I love reading anything on abundance, uh, technology. I love the advances that are taking place in that way. Uh, uh, so yeah, yeah. So I it would encourage you to look at your environment around you and look at what uh, Patrick is saying, what you're reading, what environment, what the soil is that you're putting the seed into uh, because there's more available to us today than ever before and it's increasing 
at a rapid rate too. Yeah, and yeah. so I was, and I will link to like your Twitter and Facebook so people can can follow follow you online and kind of keep track of what you're what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, Peter Diamandis is one of the. I, I love you know like the Elon Musk and the Peter sure. Diamandis and the the Ray yeah. Kurzweil's that are just like so crazy in what they what they think about and say. But yeah, that that was one of those those two books a few years ago that I read. Uh, they really you know was that light in a cloud of muck Mm. right where it's like listen yeah the world is always the world is always going to be chaotic right we're humans right and we try to we we always look at the world through these this lens of perfection and it's never perfect it's the weirdest thing neither are we and but yet you know we judge things based on perfection isn't that like ridiculous um but anyway i think right, right now it's crap right but it's always been that way but it's just like the best crap that's ever existed and so it's really looking at, okay, what does exist? How can I be inspired? How can I do the most with, uh, with, with my life, with the things I can control? And that's basically what you do, who you are, and, uh, um, and how many people you are able to help. I really like uh, Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach. I mentioned him earlier. I love listening and reading his stuff. I listen to your podcast, Patrick. I, I love what you're up to and your thinking and your mind. It was last night when the four of us were together and, and some of your thoughts and things that you shared. So definitely seek those people out. They're all, they're out there all over the place. If you want them, you can find them. You can find whatever you're looking for today. So <laughs> what are you looking for? And are you clear about what you're looking for? But definitely this podcast, this high, higher level of thinking that for me, what attracts me is when someone is constantly creating, growing, and expanding in any or all areas of their life. That's what I it's your mantra towards. Yeah. yeah, I've already said it before. That's, yeah. a, that's such a cool, that's a, such a cool saying. So yeah. applicable to like what we're talking about yeah. right now. Yeah. But also I think, I think, yeah, it's the, the books you read, people you're around, uh, your environment. I mean, we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. So go back and look at, at previous episodes. Um, do you want to give out, so you wrote a book recently. Yeah. Um, so do you want to talk about that just briefly? That's, that was the last podcast, but in case you weren't able to kind of navigate through the yeah. 50 billion interruptions that we had, <laughs> why don't you give, a, you know, give yeah. a little synopsis of your book? Yeah, thanks, Patrick. So the book that I wrote was with one of my longtime friends and business associates, Garrett Gunderson. And maybe many of you have heard of Garrett Gunderson, but it's called What Would the Rockefellers Do? How the Wealthy Get and Stay That Way. There are a specific set of rules. You've heard talk, Patrick talk about it. I'm sure if you've been following Patrick for some time, that the wealthy play by. There's a set of rules that the wealthy play by. They understand them. They know what they are. It's what the big financial institutions play by is their set of rules. We're very specific about that in our book, What Would the Rockefellers Do? And you can find it at whatwouldtherockefellersdo.com. Awesome. Okay, everyone, thank you. For, this is a long one, man. This is like almost an hour. Oh, These are like 45 minutes or so. But hey, if you stuck to the end, you're a trooper. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank you so much for uh, for, for listening. Again, uh, if you want to see the podcast, uh, then you can go on to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash uh, Paradigm Life. And that's it. You've been listening to the Wealth Standard Podcast, the gold standard in all things financial. 